Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle. I've got an interesting video for you guys today. This is somewhat of a bonus video. I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I've seen so many other channels and so many other prog reviewers and people out there give their favorite albums of the year so far lists that I felt like it was worth doing myself. Uh, so I'm adding this one to the catalog here and I'm going to talk about the 2022 releases so far that I've been really enjoying. I've picked out 20 records that I feel are worth spotlighting and are contenders for my favorite albums of the year. So I'm really excited to talk about it and I'm just going to kind of do a more casual feel. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these, more just mentioning them. They've all been featured in various shows throughout the year uh, so far, so those will definitely be out there and available. I'll put links in the description if you're interested in checking any of those out. Uh, it should be a good time. So I just decided to do the list alphabetically. I didn't want to put it in an order of preference because I want to save that for the end of the year where I do my big tournament style uh, ordering the albums and my favorites and, and giving you my number one album. I think it's fun to kind of save that uh, for the end. So, uh, But I'm going to run down some albums that this is my top 20 in alphabetical order of the, the albums that I felt were most notable so far this year for me. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, so the first one I have here today is from one of my favorite groups, of course. No surprise to anyone. This is Big Big Train and their album Welcome to the Planet. Incredible release that came out really early in the year. This came out, I believe, in January and is the last album to feature David Lungden on vocals uh, due to his unfortunate passing. So it's a very special record for fans of the band and really spoke to me. I, I thought in the outset that it was going to be more of a bonus disc to Common Ground, but it really stands on its own and has some incredible uh, prog pieces on it, some beautiful sections, some great instrumentals, and some new blood, some interesting new tracks like the title track that shows that they may be going in a new direction soon or exploring different avenues with some of their new members. So really great album there. Uh, next I want to talk about uh, I don't have the album, but Black Country New Road and their album Ants From Up There, a really cool indie rock album that just really spoke to me. It's not the typical style that I like. Uh, it's it's very unique and it has some really interesting proggy moments on it, almost veering into like King Crimson-esque territory, but staying more in an indie rock aesthetic. There's some longer tracks. There's just a really cool variety on here. And the vocalist is really emotive and interesting. And they have a lot of interesting things to say, kind of a younger group that's exploring their potential. So really great new album from them. Also really liked uh, Rosalie Cunningham and her album Two Piece Puzzle. More kind of a throwback vibe, more similar to the psychedelic sort of feel to it and but really nice late 60s early 70s and goes through a lot of different variety and moods in that framework and features a couple guests on the record and she just is a really great artist who's coming into her own and has such a great vibe and, and has such a great talent so really excited about that album of course i have to mention uh this album, Troika, from D. Virgilio, Morrison, Jennings, three of my all-time favorite musicians coming together to produce a very not-prog album, a very folky singer-songwriter type album with gorgeous uh, three-part harmonies, similar to like Crosby, Stills, and Nash style, and it's just wonderful and definitely worth checking out. Don't be scared away by it not being prog, it's still fantastic music, and they do such an incredible job. Every track is a gem on there, and probably one of my most listened to albums this year because I've just really had it on repeat and my wife really loves this one too so I have it on when she's home and so it's a really great one that I was happy to have in my collection as a huge fan of these artists especially Neil Morse as you all probably know at this point. Next um, also veering out of the prog realm really is Everything Everything, Raw Data Feel. Uh, I really love the band Everything Everything. They really tick the box for me of like a pop band or pop rock band, but, but really having a unique style that veers into proggy elements. And I really appreciate that. This album features vocals that were generated from an AI in line with the theme of the album, but I really love it. I think there's so many great tracks on it that really hit hard for me and have some great 
catchy hooks and melodies that stick with me. It's an album I also have been playing a ton and really enjoying, even though it's a little bit outside of my typical prog lane, but I think that's okay. It's really incredible music. Uh, next, we move into another album I've got here, The Flower Kings by Royal Decree. Of course, a big double disc album as the flower kings always tend to do it really is a cool throwback to their classic era i really love it but with an infusion from their newer members of the group i think it's the best of their modern era their modern trilogy of albums between this islands and waiting for miracles i think this one takes the cake really great and it even becomes better as i continue to listen to it and dive into it you know it's a lot to digest at first because there's so much there there's so many great sumptuous melodies and and great sections and a lot of instrumental interplay but it all comes together in a fascinating way as you listen more and really understand what the band's going for. Uh, the next one, kind of un another unusual one for my taste, but I can't deny how brilliant this record is. Uh, great artwork as well. This is Charlie Griffith's album, Tick Talika. A uh, really incredible, just modern metal masterpiece, really. And I'm not really a metal guy, and this often veers into very heavy territory with growling vocals and such but it's it's a concept record it has a great through line tracks blend from one to the next in a great fascinating way and it's broken up in a, in a in a way where it doesn't hit you over the head with all these heavy sections there's sections that are more proggy sections that are a bit more atmospheric and it all blends together in a really interesting conceptual way but you know, I do want to give the disclaimer that this is only for those who appreciate heavier, harder music. Of course, this is the guitarist of Haken and his first solo endeavor, and it's just an incredible ride and great for those who like the more aggressive metal parts of Haken and what they do. So really incredible. Um, this is an album that I really liked this year as well on the more traditional symphonic prog side. This is uh, Kaipo or Kappa or however you want to pronounce their name, Erskog, an uh, incredible release that just is really beautiful has some extended epics that go through so many different feels and moods and it's just a really fun ride of a record for those who like the classic symphonic style the band never misses they're very consistent and i think this is very much in line with their past several releases uh moving on to i do have the cd of this i don't have the vinyl i don't think it's released on vinyl as far as i know uh this is kite parade uh, the Way Home, really cool record that maybe has gone a little bit under people's radar, uh, but it's really, it harkens back to me to more of the progressive pop influence, similar to It Bites or something along those lines, ACT, if you're familiar with that group, um, but definitely has some John Mitchell-esque vibes, maybe even veering into Frost territory, but it's a really great record that just has some really great melodies and incredible playing and really highly recommended for those who like that style of progressive rock that kind of bleeds into to poppier territories, but not too much. There's kind of an extended epic like Letting Go um, and the ending Stranded, I believe, is also an epic that really explore a lot of musical variety that make this in a very interesting release that I've really been enjoying. Also on my list is La Lu and Paint the Sky. I really love that record. I don't have it... Uh, phys in physical format to hold up, but it's a really great one. Kind of blurring the lines between a progressive metal style, but also with some just classic progressive rock leanings, some yes inspirations that I hear all over the record. Um, Damian Wilson is singing on this and does an incredible job vocally, and it's just a really well-crafted album that just has a lot of great catchy hooks and is really a fun, interesting listen for those who like the more melodic prog style that can get a little heavy at times but stays rooted in great melody and hooks. Uh, next I have uh, this album from Jonas Lindbergh and the other side, Miles From Nowhere. Uh, I think this is really a cool album and harkens of course to the classics that I like. You know, modern prog classics like Spock's Beard, Flower King's Transatlantic really falls right in line with that lane of progressive rock. Uh, has a great closing epic that is really a highlight of the year for me so far. It's just an incredible piece and a lot of great shorter tracks as well. Just really explores that prog style that really speaks to me in that more symphonic classic vein, 
but with an infusion of fun and adventurousness like Spock's Beard and Flower Kings, and just makes for a really great release from a fairly new artist that I think has a lot of promise and could be one of the big names in the prog genre as it continues forward. So really excited. I also want to mention Lobate Scarp and their album You Have It All. Really great as well. Similar lane maybe as this uh, as the Jonas Lindbergh record. Uh, harkens back to some classic symphonic prog. Has a lot of vibes similar to, to Spock's Beard, especially maybe the more modern era of Spock's Beard with Ted Leonard at the vocals. Uh, it's really a great record that has some great shorter, more melodic, poppier tracks, but also some expansive epics that go through a lot of different moods and styles. I love the opening instrumental track that starts the proceedings off in a great light. And it's just, it's, it's, it's an incredible record that has a lot of different great uh, sections and moments. So definitely check that one out. And uh, one that's probably very well known by many watching this, this is the new Marillion album, I have to mention, An Hour Before It's Dark, which of course is just fantastic. Uh, one of their best records in my estimation. I've been slowly listening to the, all their albums for my album ranking project that I keep teasing, but is is hopefully on the horizon at some point. But I think this is one of my favorites from their entire catalog. I just really fell in love with this record. And it is that great balance between having something really important to say about social issues and, and things about our world and where we're heading, but has some incredible, beautiful music behind it that really brings it to life. And they do that perfectly, marrying the music and the lyrics together to create something truly special. So really great emotional record that has some great performances on it. Uh, one of my favorite records of the year so far, um, speaking of Spock's beard and related projects, this is Pattern Seeking Animals Only Passing Through. Really love this. Obviously I'm going to like this kind of music because of being such a huge Spock's beard nerd, um, but it has a lot of members from Spock's beard. It has Ted Leonard, Jimmy Keegan, and Dave Maros, and all kind of gelled together with the writing of John Bagehold, who's an incredible writer, who's written for Spock's Beard as well, and he's just coming into his own on this record, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It goes through a lot of different moods and styles, like I've been talking about with a lot of these records, and they're not afraid to, to be adventurous, to do more expansive prog epics, but also do shorter, more hook-driven tracks as well with great melodies, and it just all combines to a really enjoyable and listenable experience. I really appreciate that. And then I have to mention it, it's probably the newest album on this list, just recently coming out. I did a review of it fairly recently as well, the new Porcupine Tree album, Closure Continuation. Uh, I really love it. I know there's some people who are down on it, and I I don't know. I, I don't understand it, really, because I just think it's really well-crafted and a beautiful record. Uh, really harkens back to their classic period of music that I really love, the kind of in, a, in absentia, dead wing, fear of a blank planet era. I just really love the music here. Every track is unique and individual and does such a good job, and I, I know the band's proud of it. They've been speaking about it a lot on social media, and it's been getting high chart positions and all of the acclaim, and I think that's only a good thing. Some people sometimes equate something being commercial and successful, meaning that it's bad or that it's the artist selling out. But I think this is a great example of a band sticking to the artistic vision and having success from it. And I think that should be celebrated. So I don't understand why people are down on it, but you know, a lot of people are very high on it. So there's a few negative people, but I think by and large, it's a successful record and hopefully hopefully speaks to the fact that the band hopefully will continue and do more records. I'd be here for it. I'm really excited about their prospects for the future. All right, now moving to, we've got Pure Reason Revolution, Above Cirrus. I love this record. This is fantastic stuff. I'm loving it more and more the more I listen to it. It's really unique on this list. I don't think they fit neatly in a prog box. I'm not even sure they'd consider themselves prog completely, but uh, there's some heavier styles to their music, some heavier, more metallic things going on, but they stick to these really gorgeous, beautiful vocal harmonies and melodies that are really 
elevating the music to a great level. There's some shorter tracks, some more expansive tracks. Sometimes they go into a more funky kind of groove. Sometimes they explore maybe these more Pink Floyd atmospherics. But all in all, it combines to form some incredible music that I really love. So uh, definitely a high contender of one of my favorites of the year so far. Next, we've got Star One and the new album Revel in Time, Ari and Anthony Lucasen's project here that delves into some sci-fi themes and each track explores a different science fiction movie. And this one, it's all movies about time travel, which is always a fun topic in my mind. Since I'm a big sci-fi fan, this is really lining up my tastes where it's a combination of prog and sci-fi. Uh, maybe more on the metal end of the spectrum of what Aryan does. I think Star One is his more metal project, where Arion is his more prog centric project but there's still a lot of stuff here that i think is right in line with with prog as well and some really fun fun guest vocalists and and great performances and some fun times just trying to guess the different movies that the songs are from it's just a good good time and a great record and i have to mention uh the tangent songs from the hard shoulder really great record mine got a little bit crunched here but uh it's really a cool new record from the band they have more of a jazzy maybe canterbury style at times but definitely reside in that classic symphonic vein like a lot of these artists like you know flower kings and, and spock's beard and those bands and they just really knocked it out of the park with this one it has like three long epic tracks that are all fantastic and then a shorter poppier track and I, I really adored the album. I did a reaction to the big opening track with my wife, and we had a great time with it. Just really addressing some in, some really important concerns um, about the pandemic and about homelessness and about various situations. And uh, I just think Andy Tillerson does a great job of social commentary, but really focusing on the music and keeping it really great. Um, and then I've got Tiger Moth Tales, another one that I have on CD rather than on vinyl. Um, maybe I'll pick up the vinyl. I believe there's a vinyl version now that's coming out or that has come out. Uh, but this is the project of, of Peter Jones, who's an incredible uh, multi-instrumentalist and singer. He's all over the prog landscape and he guest appears on a lot of different people's records. But this is his own project and it's really great kind of classic Genesis inspired prog music that I really like some expansive more longer tracks some darker edges to this at times but then some more uplifting stuff as well uh, and finally the last one I want to mention which I don't have a physical copy of is the Von Herzen brothers and their album Red Alert in the Blue Forest such a unique interesting group that's hard to categorize there's like some folk inspirations they do a lot of different things that have Sometimes pop your hooks, sometimes they go into a heavier direction, but they have these great vocal harmonies and they really are great artists who don't just stay confined in a box, who do a lot of different things with their music and it just really creates an interesting mix of stuff that I really enjoy. And I think this is a really classic album from them, maybe one of the best that I've heard from them. So I'm really excited to delve deeper into it and really think it's a cool piece of, of music to check out. So those are the 20 records. So yeah, those are the 20 records that really spoke to me this year so far um, in no particular order, or I guess in, in a particular order, but not in order of preference, just in alphabetical order uh, by artist. And hopefully you'll find something there that's a good recommendation that you're interested in. Uh, I try to scour the internet to try to find interesting cool releases to share with you guys i know some of these are the big ones that if you're following prog music you know about already but you know if it's good music i want to talk about it and so those are the albums that i've enjoyed please mention in the comments the albums you've loved this year the ones that i may not have mentioned here that you think are deserving of being some of the best albums of the year so i really love hearing that feedback that's why i decided to do this show is because i really enjoy this style show from other reviewers and other people in the prog spectrum because it always introduces me to some cool new music that i didn't know about or that i'd heard about but hadn't felt the need to explore too deeply but maybe if it's on people's list maybe it's something worth looking into so definitely 
a, a fun time to be had listening to great new music. Hopefully there was something here that sparked your attention. Like I said, in the description will be links to all the reviews that I've done of these different albums. And hopefully you guys are having a great time out there and are enjoying the music. So thank you guys so much for your support. And I'll hopefully catch you guys in a future video. Bye.